Hey, good morning from Walla Walla, Washington. It's quite a frosty morning. And uh, I'm just outside my uh, little shack here surveying some of my uh, junk out here. <laughs> and this here is uh, it's a World War II manly 50 or 60 ton press. I think it's a 50 ton, maybe 45 ton, but... Uh, you can squeeze, <laughs> put a big cheater handle on this thing, and you can uh, you can squeeze uh, 60 tons out of it. <laughs> it uh, I got this uh, I, I got this press here. I don't know more than 30 years ago, and it, it, it's local. It's from the uh, air base up here, and uh, I rebuilt uh, a lot of dirt bike crankshafts and other types of multi-piece crankshafts, snowmobiles and stuff. And there's a lot of pressure holding those things together, the crank pins into the other parts. And uh, what happened, this wheel here, there's a big Acme, uh, it's like a big Acme nut. And uh, the ram here is, is threaded Acme. And the last uh, dirt bike, <clears throat> crankshaft that I did this it, it broke it's like uh, the threads wore out in this cast iron wheel and it just stripped it out so I'm gonna have to make um, an Acme threaded sleeve to repair that and uh, I, I will do that so I go on in here see that's just another project <laughs> now this milling machine is really coming along great at that door closed there yeah and I got the uh, you can see I've got this um, horizontal arbor bearing uh, it is it's just uh, really nice I haven't used it yet but I will so if you haven't seen this mill before it's a uh, it's got this um, sliding vertical head attachment here. And it's it's really heavy with this yoke. It's uh, solid cast and um, it, it it's hard to remove and put back on. So <clears throat> what they did was they had an adapter and it was missing and I just made one out of this piece of steel. I'll show you the alignment on that. That was kind of a tricky deal. I'll take the lock off. I'll come around here. And I can uh, move the ram uh, or the overarms forward. Just a second, let me get that in a better position. I have a big, big wrench on this here. You see this uh, kind of a double square deal here, but it uh, you can move uh, each uh, overarm independently if you want to. Okay, let's crank it out there. Okay. So the alignment is really pretty darn good. With with the lock off. That all this weight causes uh, about three thousandths or three and a half thousandths sag, but when you put the lock on it, it lifts it up about a half thousand. So I attempted to bore uh, in that position by clamping it and vice and feeding it with a table. So let's feed that in. See. It stabs in, it, it stabs in good. The, the alignment, I think, is good enough. 
just like that. And you take and lock it and uh, get a little oil here. <laughs> well, that's my fix for that. And I think it's going to be just fine. And I've been busy, busy, busy. I got all my uh, my grinding done, and that that's just great. And I got the 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 cutter grinder all cleaned up. Isn't that nice? Now the neat thing about the cutter grinder and and the uh, horizontal milling machine, in, in case you didn't know this, and some people might not, these things <laughs> are sort of obsolete anymore. You can remove the arbor with the cutter on it and bring it over here and put it in the machine. I have a tail center and you can grind the cutter right on that arbor, then put it back in here and um, the cutter is uh, perfectly uh, true. And that's kind of neat. And I'm going to uh, I'll pick up some slab cutters and use them for roughing stuff out and a few uh, extra wheel cutters and uh, and uh, that, then you can uh, it, more economically do a lot of simple things like slotting and stuff like that because you can easily resharpen the cutters and the, the wheel cutters uh, have a lot of teeth on them. Like this one, this is just an eighth inch one here. And uh, they just, uh, they, they last a considerable uh, amount of time before uh, sharpening. And this one here, you can keep gnashing it back and, and sharpen it until there's nothing left of it. So back in the old days, things were... A little bit more uh, economical. You can buy a cutter like that and use it for a very long time. Hey, I hope you're all doing good and having fun in your shop. This uh, this old milling machine is uh, really a kick in the pants and uh, really nice to have the uh, horizontal um, part working. You know, to uh, convert back to uh, the vertical head, the horizontal arbors removed, then this drive splines put in there, and this part removed, of course, then it drives the uh, uh, vertical head. And I'm going to do some gear cutting. Here's, I picked up gear cutters and stuff. I'm going to do it on accent lathe, and I found this really nice old antique brown and sharp. Um, gear tooth veneer caliper in excellent condition. I, I was told that uh, the master tool makers at Sterrett and Brown and Sharp make these because they're a difficult uh, tool to make for those guys. Pretty neat though. I'm really glad I found that. Found it cheap on eBay. <laughs> Sometimes get lucky on stuff. Okay. Well, that's the way it's looking, and I'm going to get busy with uh, a whole bunch of stuff, and uh, I got things to make. And I hope you guys got a bunch of cool things to make, too. And uh, the more you do, the more, the, the more cool things that seem to come up the way I look at it. Okay, well, I'm going to get busy with stuff in here, and I just wanted to check in and say hello. And uh, I want... <laughs> I'm 70 years old today, so happy birthday to me. Okay, bye-bye.